Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. As you see, let's talk about some fireworks photos. This is actually really easy to do. It's very pertinent because here in the United States, in just a couple of days, it's July 4th. That means we celebrate our independence and we have plenty of fireworks everywhere. Now, fireworks photos can be a lot of fun. They're really easy to take. Uh, the number one thing you need is a tripod. Got to have a tripod. And number two, a wide lens on your camera. Uh, I actually shot most of these with, as you see, a 14 to 24 millimeter lens. Uh, although I wasn't in the best position to take some of these, I'm going to show you how I enhance them uh, actually in Photoshop and get a better result. Uh, so, Nikon D3, 4 seconds at f22. ISO 400. So let's break that down. Number one, ISO 400. Uh, it was good for me in my situation. Uh, you might need to bump it down to 200 if you have a little bit brighter fireworks, or maybe if you're a little bit closer. Uh, but you know, you take one or two and you gauge it, you take a quick look at it on the back of the screen, uh, take a look at your histogram, see where you're at, and go from there. F22, you want it closed all the way down. That's the best way to do it. Then your time. Your time, which is your shutter speed, is where you get the streaks, okay? You want that to be wide open like that um, and open for a long time so that you get those streaks of light. If you have a real short shutter speed like, you know, a 15th of a second or a 30th of a second, it's not going to do you any good. You're just going to get a little tiny blip. You know, you want that real long streak, and so that was good. It was perfect. Uh, now, let's talk about some, we, we know how to expose, we know what lens, all that stuff. Let's talk about stuff that we need to avoid. And as you see right here, this is actually the shadow of a tree. Okay, that's something that I needed to avoid. Here in my local hometown, last year they actually moved the fireworks. Uh, unbeknownst to everyone, you know, we're all set, sit, sitting there, and we're lined up, and we're all looking, going this way, where the fireworks have gone for the last, I don't know, 10 years or something like that, 15 years, we're all facing this way, and all of a sudden, they're over here, and so we need to, we had to turn over there and start looking at them, so that's why I ended up actually behind some trees, and they weren't very high, so I'm going to be looking for a new place to photograph them this year, I know that, but anyway, fireworks uh, stay away from the trees uh, do your best to, to move away from them so you don't get a shadow like this uh, in there next one stay away from light sources see this uh, spot of light over here on the side uh, that I think that was from like a, uh, some kind of a, an outdoor light or something you know or like I think it was a park and so you know it was another light source that was sitting there I actually ended up shading my lens so that I didn't have this this light falling into my lens and you know on a long four second exposure you're gonna have this you won't might not realize it but you know just check your photos every once in a while don't shoot a whole bunch of them uh, and then realize that something like this can happen but I get a tip for a way to get rid of this later alright so let's go on for a couple more photos this is a really good one a little wide not quite as tight as I wanted but you know what sometimes with fireworks they'll have a bunch of them and there's no way for you to react to be able to change the lens be able to zoom out so uh, with the technique I'm going to show you here in a few minutes you're actually better off with it wider and you get a better result all right now when we're shooting these you're waiting for it to go up you're you're you know the they they shoot it off and then you just before or just after as it's just starting to go and you kind of see it right here in this one just as this white part is starting to go you open that shutter when you open that shutter at that point then you get the streaks and you leave it open for a while okay now you'll notice these were all four second exposures uh, that's what I had my camera set at you can always go with a longer exposure if you want to uh, just to try it out I would definitely try it and uh, also adjust your timing maybe it would be a little earlier maybe a little later uh, you really never know, but the four seconds seems to be a good f good one for me for this particular set of fireworks. Uh, but as always, your mileage may vary. Uh, so here's a couple other ones that I did that were good from last year. Another really good one right there. Have a couple different colors. Different colors in there are always excellent. 
Awesome color in that one. Really cool. Love the blue and the orange or the fiery red color in there. That one kind of has a different streaky, kind of a feathery feel. Love it. And a couple different colors again. All right. So how do what we can we do with these? They're okay as is. They're not great. But you know what? Let's take them a step uh, better. All right. There was a, I think I may have tweeted or something, a fireworks photo uh, where on one side there was all these awesome photo of fireworks, but then the other side there was a storm. Uh, you know what? That was probably done with Photoshop. In fact, I'm, I know it was done with Photoshop or some kind of editing software. So since it was done with that, let's do that ourselves. Let's combine some of these photos. All right. So here we are in Photoshop. And I have uh, the original file is right there. Okay. And, uh, you know, you see the different fireworks that are there. Now, I'm going to add this file in on top. Now, obviously, we have a problem already because the black from the other photo, from the one photo, is on hiding the other one, hiding the original bottom layer that I put it on top of. So, easy way to fix this, and I'm going to bring in my layers box right here, is to change our layer uh, mode, blending mode, from normal to screen. And watch when I click screen, what happens? it removed all of that black area. Now there's tons of different ways to do this. This is definitely not the end all be all way, but it works really well. Okay, so I now have this on layer on screen, which removes that black because there's black under underneath here too. So I can place this part of it wherever I want. There we go, there, over there, over here, and I can add them all a bunch more layers. Here's a couple more. Okay, and you know what? Let's take this original one from here. Oops. Turn off auto select from here and put them down here again. Okay, now this has turned into a really cool dynamic photo just by collaging these. And seriously, I put this together in like three minutes. This took no time. So then all we got to do is save it. Uh, yes, we want to save that. Oops, don't know what happened there. So yeah, we want to save it, and then I can go back into uh, Lightroom here, and I can show my two star, oops, there it is, in Lightroom, okay? So I've obviously added the PSD file into Lightroom so that you can see it. So this is really cool. This would be a great gift for somebody, or if you wanted to print it out and hang it on your wall, or, or just put, post it up on the web as a highlights. But you know what? It looks really, really cool. And um, one other thing I will remark is you can get rid of little stuff like this just with, uh, let's go back over to Photoshop here. Um, we can actually take the, uh, a tool and, uh, and we're gonna add a layer mask here, which is really, really easy. I'm gonna add a layer mask to this and then take the brush tool of B and you know what, if I was on the right layer, it would probably work great. <laughs> Oops, still the wrong layer. Try again. There we go. Okay. Take your brush tool on a layer mask with a black color and then get rid of that little bit of stuff right there. And I'm doing this really quickly and down and dirty. But you can get rid of that and we can save. And let's go back over to Lightroom. And as you can see, that disappeared. Okay, and that's what we want. We can get rid of this little spot, all that stuff. So it would make it look really, really cool. We could even rotate these. Remember how we had that tree problem? That's what's going on here is that tree was in the way. Well, I could rotate this 90 degrees and you wouldn't even be able to tell. And so that tree problem wouldn't be there anymore. So I think this would uh, be a really cool way for you guys to do something with your fireworks photos. Uh, you, even if you don't have that really gorgeous uh, setting for them with the, with the water or a boat or a this or a that, if just the normal fireworks shooting up in the sky, you can really do something with them hereafter. Uh, I'd love to see some of your fireworks photos, if you have any of those from last year or the year before or anything like that. Uh, and of course, coming up after the 4th, let's see them on Facebook, on Twitter, and also Google+. Plus. Someone sent me a Google+. Plus. Uh, uh, announcement and, a, and an invite and so I got that 
And so um, you can find me on Google, on Google+. Plus. I'll put a post to that on Cazillo.com so that you guys can uh, can check that out and you can add me there. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com.